Well, and thank you very much. It is a day we have long waited for, and hopefully uh, uh, your positive remarks today will, uh, will bear that out and set us on uh, the right trend, a positive trend. Um, as we had discussed uh, earlier in, in private, I want to raise this uh, in, in public. Uh, while um, our trends are moving toward positive territory, uh, the EU's trends seem to be moving into negative territory with uh, negative uh, overnight interest uh, in deposit rates, um, also uh, uh, additional uh, thoughts about uh, ways to uh, stimulate their economy. Uh, they play a major role in the world economy. We see slowdowns in China. We see problems, uh, significant problems in Brazil and throughout many emerging markets. My question is how uh, that clearly is uh, the world, uh, much of the world seems to be on a negative trend. How do you balance those two issues out relative their, to their impact on each other? Uh, and how does the FOMC uh, take that into consideration in terms of their decision making? Well, thank you for that question. We have seen um, relatively weak growth in the global economy, um, with different parts of the global economy faring different, differently, but um, relatively weak growth. Um, the U.S. has enjoyed stronger growth in labor market performance. Um, that weak growth shows through to the demand for U.S. exports, and it's one factor that has been um, depressing U.S. net exports. In addition, that difference in strength between the global economy and the U.S. Um, and reflected also in different expectations about the path of monetary policy. As you noted, uh, the ECB has um, added stimulus, uh, has taken additional actions today to provide further stimulus while there's an expectation that the FOMC is coming closer to raising rates. Um, that difference in expectations about monetary policy reflecting different uh, st underlying strength has led over the last year and a half to a substantial appreciation of the dollar. So the combination of weak foreign growth and a strong dollar has both of those things have depressed our export growth and um, increased imports because imports are cheaper. So that is a drag on the U.S. economy. Um, but again, we have to remember that consumer spending, uh, business investment, residential investment account for 85 percent of total spending. And domestic spending is on a solid course. It's been growing around 3 percent. So the combination of um, solid domestic spending coupled with a drag from abroad that has been operative and will continue to be operative, overall on balance, that's led, and I think it will continue to lead, to growth that is somewhat above trend and um, w w on a continuing path of labor, for labor market improvement. But of course, it's highly relevant to our decisions, and the strength of the dollar is one factor that um, puts, um, means that monetary policy for the U.S. Um, is more likely to, to follow a gradual path. We also have global uncertainty relative to our national security and the, and the world's security, and we seem to be entering a period of time here where um, violence uh, in one form or another, uh, whether it's domestic or inter international, whether it's terrorist-oriented or, or um, uh, connected to other uh, means, uh, what uh, you can lay awake at night thinking of scenarios uh, where uh, coordinated terrorist attacks or just a acceleration of the kind of violence that we're seeing, mass shootings and so forth and so on, could have a negative effect uh, and I think would have a negative effect on the economy uh, relative to people's fear of spending, going out, enjoying sports, entertainment, uh, uh, other types of entertainment, or uh, going to malls and shopping, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, to what, how does that factor into uh, the Fed's thinking uh, regarding uh, uh, its impact on the economy? 
So those risks are ones that we watch very carefully, and I would agree with you that it does have the potential to have a significant economic effect. I would not say that um, I see a significant effect at this point, although certainly in the aftermath of the financial crisis, we have seen rather cautious behavior on the part of households and firms. And well, I think there are many different factors that contribute to that cautious behavior, the crisis itself, the slow growth we have seen. Um, many businesses talk about regulatory uh, uncertainty. I would add um, geopolitical risk as a further factor that uh, is causing that kind of cautiousness. Thank you. My time has expired.